Tomo News presents Mars. <laughs> Alien theorists claim to see crab face hugger in Martian cave. NASA's Mars Curiosity rover has picked up some pretty interesting images of the red planet. The latest fascinating image includes one feature that space enthusiasts say looks very similar to a face hugger from the movie Alien or a giant crab. Can you see it? Here's a closer look courtesy of UFO Vini. Scientists say that seeing recognizable animals or objects in clouds or rock formations is a psychological response called pareidolia. That's why people can see things that aren't there. But what if a giant crab-like creature did live on Mars? That means there's got to be water there too. Or the potential for all kinds of life forms to exist in the harsh environment on the fourth planet from the sun. David Lazarus from the Los Angeles Times tweeted, Rock on Mars that looks like hideous crab monster identified by scientists as just a rock. This isn't the first time an image from Mars has stirred up us Earthlings. Back in 1976, NASA's Viking 1 orbiter snapped a picture of what appeared to be a face staring back from the Martian surface. It turned out that was just a rock too. New Mars rover photo proves NASA isn't on the red planet. Conspiracy theorists' latest obsession is this image they say proves there is no rover on Mars. The image was taken on September 16th by NASA's Mars rover, which has been exploring the red planet. The photo shows what looks like a snake crawling up a rocky cliff. Wingnuts believe that NASA never sent a rover to Mars and has been sending back images from remote desert regions on Earth. Some believe NASA is sending images from isolated facilities in Nevada, while others have pointed to a remote island in Canada. No theory on why NASA would bother to do this. They say the image shows NASA is slipping up and accidentally capturing wildlife. If we're to believe the conspiracy crowd, this is proof that NASA isn't actually on Mars. Scientists, however, say that snake-gate commenters suffer from pareidolia, when the brain recognizes a familiar pattern or object even though it's not there. Or perhaps, just maybe, there are actually snakes on Mars. Astronauts might one day hibernate their way to Mars. Getting to Mars from Earth takes a long time, as long as 200 days. A group of scientists funded by NASA think astronauts could pass most of that time by hibernating in a sleep chamber, much like what you see here. Each chamber is outfitted with tubes that lower the body's temperature as well as provide nutrition. An intranasal cooling system would lower the astronaut's temperature by 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which significantly reduces metabolism. The astronaut is fed via catheters attached to the thigh or chest, while another tube carries waste away. This result is what's called a torpor-induced state, using therapeutic hypothermia. One concern is muscle atrophy due to lack of use. Scientists think they can address this through neuromuscular electrical stimulation. As the astronauts approach Mars, the wake-up cycle begins. Warming pads slowly raise the body's temperature. It takes roughly one hour for every one degree rise in body temperature. Fully awake after their long nap, the astronauts are ready to begin their Mars mission. Mad scientist Elon Musk wants to nuke Mars. Stephen Colbert recently compared Elon Musk to a real-life Tony Stark during an interview in which the entrepreneur set out his vision to make Mars habitable. Now how exactly would this mad scientist make this foreign land habitable? Good old American way. Bombs. Terraforming is the hypothetical process of altering a planet's environment to make it livable. Tesla CEO Elon Musk recently floated the idea that Mars could be terraformed through nuclear strikes to destroy its polar ice caps. The average temperature on Mars is similar to Antarctica in winter. Destroying the poles may warm the planet, but scientists told the Los Angeles Times this may not warm Mars enough and could lead to unknown changes in its terrain. Naturally, Twitter had something to say. User James Royce asked, Can Musk get any cooler? While Jackalope asked, why does Musk want to nuke Mars? Another slower method Musk suggested would be heating the planet through greenhouse gases, but this also faces problems, as Mars' current levels of carbon dioxide are potentially suitable for plants, but poisonous to animals. What do you think of Musk's ideas? Are they science fiction? Or do you think he may actually have a point? 
SpaceX aims to reach Mars by 2018. After much teasing, SpaceX finally announced a launch date for its mission to Mars, and it's in the very near future. SpaceX is partnering with NASA to send a Red Dragon, a modified Dragon 2 capsule, on a mission to Mars by 2018. The company has been delivering cargo to the International Space Station since 2012, but the Red Planet is 560,000 times farther away. Instead of the Falcon 9, the Red Dragon will be launched using the more powerful Falcon Heavy rocket. But while launching the rocket is relatively simple, the landing, especially on a planet like Mars, is where things get tricky. With a much thinner atmosphere than Earth's, there's a less cushion for incoming spacecraft, which increases the likelihood of a crash. The Dragon's heat shield can withstand temperatures over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, making it possible to safely enter and plummet through the Martian atmosphere. The capsule is also equipped with eight Super Draco engines, which would allow it to execute a propulsive landing in the Red Planet's service. which would allow it to execute a propulsive landing on the Red Planet's surface. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk is set to reveal more details about the Mars launch at the International Astronautical Conference in September. NASA discovers Mars had more water than Earth's Arctic Ocean. For decades, planetary scientists have suspected that ancient Mars was a much warmer, wetter environment than it is today. New research by NASA indicates that Mars had 5 million cubic miles of water some 4.3 billion years ago. The water is believed not to have been spread evenly over the Red Planet, but instead collected in the northern plains on the planet's northern hemisphere. Mars's ancient ocean likely covered 19% of its surface, a relative area comparable to the Atlantic Ocean, which occupies 17% of the Earth's surface. Mars had a volume of water 6.5 times greater than what is in its ice caps today, indicating a massive loss of water into space. Researchers found the major difference between ancient and modern Mars is the ratio of heavy and light water molecules. Water's other form less familiar than H2O is called HDO. A deuterium atom replaces a second hydrogen atom, which is a heavy isotope of hydrogen that has a neutron in its nucleus. By comparing the ratio of HDO to H2O in water found on Mars today, water that was trapped in a Mars meteorite dating back to some 4.5 billion years, scientists were able to determine how much water escaped into space. The heavier water molecules discovered demonstrated that Mars had lost 87% of its water to space. Senior Goddard scientist Michael Mumma believes Mars was wetter for a longer period, which suggests it might have been habitable. NASA team practices living on Mars on Volcano in Hawaii. A group of researchers are living on a volcano in Hawaii to simulate life on Mars as part of a NASA financed study, the Hawaii Space Exploration Analog and Simulation, also known as High Seas. The six people participating in the project started living inside a dome-shaped building on Mauna Loa Volcano last Wednesday and will be there for the next eight months. The dome sits at an altitude of 8,000 feet. The two-story building has a diameter of 36 feet and has about 1,500 square feet of space. Like real astronauts, the crew has to perform scientific work, including wearing spacesuits for excursions outside the dome. To simulate communication between Mars and Earth, crew members only have access to email, and each message is delayed by 20 minutes before being sent. Any reply will also arrive with a 20-minute delay. Years from now, when trained astronauts travel to Mars, they will have to spend about 500 days on the planet. The goal of the High Seas Project is to study how well people can live, work, and get along while isolated from civilization. Life on Mars? Mars may not have been an arid wasteland after all, at least according to a new study that suggests the Red Planet may have been far more habitable than previously thought. Martian meteorites contain a specific mineral that has long led scientists to believe the planet had an ancient, dry environment. The mineral, called merylite, contains no water or hydrogen, which led to the assumption that its origins were likewise devoid of liquid. 
But new research now suggests that marillite was originally a hydrogen-containing mineral, and that Mars may have had a more water-rich history. When an asteroid or comet collides with the planet, the force of the collision propels Martian rocks containing Whitlocket out into space. Researchers theorized when these rocks enter Earth's atmosphere as meteors, the shock pressure and high temperature sustained during impact, dehydrate the mineral, turning it into marillite. They tested the theory by blasting synthetic Whitlocket with a gas-powered gun at speeds of more than 1,600 miles per hour and with huge amounts of pressure. The shock experiments were sustained for only a fraction of a second, but already resulted in partial conversion, with 36% of the mineral transformed to marillite. The findings suggest Mars could have had a more abundant water supply. It also hints at the possibility of life on the red planet, as Whitlocket is water-soluble and contains phosphorus, which is an essential element for life. More detailed studies of Martian meteorites may provide more insight, but a Martian rock taken and transported to Earth will likely be needed for confirmation. For now, scientists need to make do with thermal imaging and rock sample analysis from the rovers. NASA makes a discovery that could reveal something new about Mars's past. For the first time in four decades, NASA has found oxygen in Mars's atmosphere. But hold up, it's probably not the oxygen you're thinking of. Atomic oxygen in Mars's atmosphere was detected by a specialized 747 jetliner that flew between 37,000 feet to 45,000 feet above sea level in Earth's atmosphere. From our atmosphere, the plane measured the amount of atomic oxygen on Mars by using a spectrometer to observe far infrared waves on the planet. The oxygen atoms were found in one of the upper layers of Mars's atmosphere, known as the mesosphere. Atomic oxygen refers to a single oxygen atom and is different from the oxygen in Earth's atmosphere, which involves two oxygen atoms. Atomic oxygen in Mars's atmosphere fits with scientists' belief that Mars was once warm and wet, with a thicker atmosphere capable of sustaining water and even life. But over time, solar winds are said to have stripped away Mars's atmosphere, causing the planet to become cold and barren. Studying the atomic oxygen in Mars's atmosphere will help scientists understand how and why the life-sustaining gases that once covered Mars billions of years ago has disappeared. TV show gives a glimpse of life on Mars. The first home designed for humans to live in on Mars will be unveiled at an exhibition in the UK on November 10th. The exhibition of the show home ties in with a National Geographic docudrama that imagines colonists from Earth living on the Red Planet. The house would be constructed with Martian soil. The soil would be microwaved until it forms a brick. The bricks would be used to build the walls of an igloo-shaped dome, which would be around 10 feet thick. Recycled spacecraft parts, including a double airlocked entrance, would be used as the front door. Experts believe the dome would be able to withstand the Martian environment, including extremely low temperatures, micro-meteorite impacts, a thin atmosphere, and cosmic radiation. An underground area would contain facilities such as a dining hall and laboratory. The colony would expand module by module until it forms a city, termed Olympus Town. The exhibition at the Royal Observatory Greenwich in London coincides with the launch of the six-part docudrama Mars, which tells the story of an attempt to colonize Mars in the year 2033. Nonprofit group plans permanent Mars colony. The race to Mars has begun. SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk says the company will send people to Mars by 2024, and he will reveal plans for colonization in September. Meanwhile, a nonprofit group also aims to establish permanent Mars colonies, sending the first group of astronauts by 2026. After Earth, Mars is the most habitable planet in our solar system. It has similar natural resources, a temperate climate, and an adaptable gravitational pull on its surface. Nonprofit foundation Mars One has developed a plan to colonize Mars. It has already selected six teams of four individuals, and the first team will begin training next year. In 2020, Mars One will launch a communications satellite to the Red Planet. Between 2022 and 2025, a series of rovers will land and assemble livable habitats, which include a life support unit and a communication system. The living unit will house an inflatable living section and an airlock used by astronauts when leaving the sealed, habitable settlement. 
The unit will include materials for the construction of rooms, floors, and electrical outlets, and comes equipped with showers and kitchen areas. Additional units will arrive and be constructed as new teams join the colony. Attached to the living unit is the environmental control and life support system. The system will feed nitrogen and argon gas extracted from Mars's atmosphere into the habitable space as inert gases. Thin film solar photovoltaic panels will be included to generate electricity. The life support system will be equipped with heating units to boil and extract water from ice in the planet's soil. Once the astronauts have landed, it will also be in charge of water purification and removal of carbon dioxide from the living unit atmosphere. The colony's communication system will include two orbiting satellites, one around Mars and one around the Sun. The satellite orbiting Mars will only be interrupted when Mars is positioned between it and Earth. To counter the lapse, the second satellite orbiting the Sun will intercept and relay the transmission, allowing almost 24/7 communication with Earth. The colony will lose transmission only when the Sun is between Mars and Earth, and Mars is between its satellite and Earth simultaneously. Mars One will launch a team of four members every two years, starting in 2026. It will take a year after departing Earth for a team to land on the surface of Mars. The organization hopes to train and send new teams even after the initial six have colonized the planet. NASA may have found a way to bring water back to Mars. NASA's scientists think it's possible to restore Mars's oceans by creating an artificial magnetic field that sits in front of the planet. Scientists say it is possible to place an inflatable structure that generates a magnetic dipole field at the Mars L1 Lagrange point. This would form an artificial magnetic shield to protect the planet from solar wind and radiation. Under this protection, the Martian atmosphere could become thick enough to melt carbon dioxide ice at the northern pole. In time, the atmosphere could spark a greenhouse gas effect that could restore some of Mars's oceans. Scientists said if the Martian atmosphere could be greatly enhanced over the next few decades, it would help pave the way for colonization on Mars. U.S. space agency NASA will have to find creative solutions to overcoming the hazards of space radiation for future manned missions to Mars. Radiation readings from the Curiosity rover on Route 2 and while on Mars revealed levels dangerous to humans. Exposure to solar radiation would be highest during the 180 to 253 day journey to the Red Planet. Current spacecraft radiation shielding is insufficient for such long journeys. Walls filled with hydrogen-rich water offer one solution. Electromagnetic shields could provide even more protection. Astronauts would need this protection to survive the mission. An average CT scan gives a dose of around 10 millisieverts. Whereas a round trip to Mars would expose a human to 554 to 770 millisieverts of radiation. Excessive exposure to radiation can cause cataracts, cancer of the thyroid glands, lungs, stomach, and sterility. NASA aims to send humans to Mars sometime in the 2030s.